Hi, and welcome to the Live Edge Lumber Girl Show. This episode of the Live Edge Lumber Girl Show comes to you from Tags Tools. With two locations to serve you in Hamilton, one at 1104 Barton Street East, and in the mountain at 1361 Rymel Road East, your go-to store for hard-to-find tools and machinery. All right, so I'm here with Lori Nolan of Wood Design with designs by Lori, and uh, Lori is probably one of the top Instagram epoxy river uh, ocean artists out there right now. So I'm so excited to, to interview you, Lori. It's awesome. Thank you so much for doing this. Maybe we could start with talking about so, actually, woodworking is your side hustle. And I think that's awesome. <laughs> and um, so your your full time job is actually an RN. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So wait, uh, how long have you been a nurse? Like your whole life, or? Well, pretty much since yeah. 1986. Okay. Okay. Right on. You've had your challenges over the last few months, then definitely. Eh? And I guess the wood. Uh, Working has been a good way to alleviate some of that stress for sure. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. It's my outlet. Yeah. Night shift can't sleep. Let's do something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. That's that. I wondered where you found the time because <laughs> oh, I yeah. can barely find time to do what I do. And, and, uh, yeah, actually I probably spend more time in the office than I do in, in, in my garage right now. So, but I can't yeah. do anything about that, so just go with it. <laughs> oh, when you're, you know, when you're shifting directions like you are, uh, <laughs> right? You, you have to go through all the legwork. Yes, totally exactly. Yeah. What we do is we want to be in the shop. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. Um, what do we, do you work in your garage? Is that where you're doing your work or do you have like a... I have a garage. I have a shop. I have a three-quarter wraparound porch <laughs> old lake house and that's actually where I am right now we then closed this space so I could do some sanding in the winter um but really and I do tend to epoxy if I really want stuff bang on on my kitchen island so it's all I'm for the house and my, I have a full basement that we're renovating um for my studio so we're in the process of doing that right now okay so my whole property is Lori's here, she's there, she's everywhere. Oh, that's awesome. So it's just one big studio. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. There's right. epoxy on the floors. I've burnt the walls in the kitchen. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's bad. It's, it, I really need to have one dedicated space. And we're right. Working. Yeah. Only a woman could, do, could get away with this stuff, you know. <laughs> I have five adults in the house. I don't know how they put up with it, really. <laughs> they do. They, 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 they encourage me and they learn to live with it. So yeah, we yeah. know who he is anyway, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So um, tell me about what you're working on right now. You, I have, are you doing any commission pieces? Um, I'm working on some river tables. Um, I just sent one to Florida. Um, I've got another one that's local. Um, and I've got another one that's going to Ottawa. So that one, I haven't poured the color layer yet, but uh, I'm setting the mold up for that one. So those are kind of my big three pieces. And then of course, while the epoxy dries, then I do all my little stuff. Okay, and, right uh, The artist challenge is going on. Um, so our entries are due this weekend. So I'm working on a piece for that. And yeah, just little stuff, boards, ocean yeah. scenes, you know. Just stuff to keep me busy. I'm on holiday right now, so I'm really okay. maker mode. Okay, yeah, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, I'm sort of, uh, actually, I chose August as sort of like I just said, I'm sort of on holidays this month. So that's why you probably haven't, you haven't seen me a lot on Instagram. I've been just sort of chilling. It's dog, dog days of summer, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so, and I can do that. I'm the boss, so I can that's do that. Right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So really, where are we going? We're we're doing staycations because really we can't go anywhere. Yes, uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, Other although I do north, but I don't have a cottage up north. But you right. know, 
my husband's family's from New Brunswick. We can't even go there, so. No, yeah. Ah, staycations are okay. It sounds like you have a nice space with your wrap around that deck and everything, so. Oh, the lake's out in the backyard, too, so that's a little. Oh, fun. you're on the lake. Oh, okay. Where are you? Are you in, where are you? We're on the beach strip in Hamilton. Okay. So if you're going over the Skyway, that yeah. little community that runs along the lake, we're right there. It's kind okay. of a that nobody knows about. Ah, okay. I have an uncle in Bur that has a cottage in Burlington on the beach there. Oh. That's close to you then, right? So it's over the lift bridge. And okay. On the yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a nice little spot there. You wouldn't know it's there when you're no. driving over like you would know. No. And that fish and chip place is there and all that stuff, right? I have yeah. a daughter there so hutches <laughs> right on <laughs> yeah so um i guess i want to know a little bit about how how this all started for you like well i i've always done wood pieces like i came from a household that was full of antiques and old furniture so i started refinishing and then um when the live edge wood started coming out and of course i guess we all sort of went on pinterest and I saw the epoxy. So I basically just went and bought the Home Depot Verithane epoxy. I mean, it's, you know, it, it's all that was sort of available that right. I knew. And I remember I went over the river to Michigan and bought my first piece of spalted maple. And it was you know, close to four feet. It was quite a large project. Smuggled it across the border. Don't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> my mom lives in a border town so you know what the wood was fairly cheap Turval lumber he's out of Michigan anyway beautiful pieces I brought this maple home and I started working on it and I started putting epoxy on after that table I, I started putting epoxy on everything every piece of wood I could get because <laughs> I, really I'm a girly girl I like wood but I like shiny things yes. shiny sparkly things so anyway, I just started epoxying everything on site. And then <laughs> when some of the resin artists like um, Ann Upton, uh, Jess in particular from Crow Creek Designs. Yes. When she started putting out those salmon, the river salmons, I, like, I almost crapped my drawers. <laughs> but I, I, yeah. I love it. Yeah. I love the concept. I love water. I love waves. And I thought to myself, you know what? And I'm pretty determined I am gonna nail this. And, and trust me, I went through gallons of epoxy, tons of pieces of wood. My stuff looked like crap. I looked, you know, <laughs> I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna get it and I'm gonna nail it. And two yeah, years I later, we're, we're sort of getting there. <laughs> I like your colors that they're, um, like a lot of people do the light blues and all that, but you sort of, and that was something that I was actually thinking about that needed to happen was that some of those darker uh, aqua greens and all that that you're using are a little more realistic, really. When you want to sort of go and capture movement and depth and color, I think, and when people ask me, oh, Lord, what color do you use for that? And I go, well, the list is long. <laughs> I figured that. <laughs> I'll use a little pinch of that and I'll keep mixing and mixing until I get it right. And I, I'll, I'll pull my stick out. Oh yeah, that looks good. I'll use that. And then I, I use at least four to seven colors in a piece. So it takes, it's, it's a little bit of a mixology kind of thing, you know, where you find the right colors and the right combination. And, and you've brought all these other elements into it with your starfish and your shells and sand. You put yeah. sand in there. How do you, do you adhere it to the wood before you pour? You Actually, must have to. Don't you? Yes, mix it in epoxy. You mix it into the epoxy and yeah. pour it in. Okay. Okay. A little secret. It's okay. messy. And, you know, it's but messy it, as heck. Yeah. But it's easy to pack. I don't quite know yet. I've seen some Asian artists pour straight sand in their river tables and actually pour epoxy right over top of it. But I always freak out about that because I think, what if it's too, like, like if obviously it's maybe denser than the epoxy, it will sink. Take that chance. I'm going to try it on maybe a smaller board and, you know. Right. Yeah. I wouldn't want to take the chance of it starting oh. to float around in the epoxy, right? Out up your epoxy. Can you imagine? Yeah. 
on that piece it would of be garbage. a nightmare. It would be like, I'm throwing this one away. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> that ain't gonna happen. <laughs> and how about making your waves? Are you using like a heat gun? This, like, yeah. And, yeah, okay. And um, what kind of heat gun do you have? Oh, you know what? It's just a teepee off of Amazon. It's, I tell people it, it's green. I don't even think it has it's a name. green, okay. <laughs> yeah, mine's orange. I have no idea what kind it is. Oh, I, I think a, a Wagner. I have a Wagner, yeah. <laughs> and I get the nozzle, like the, you know, the nozzle on it. And, yeah. um, and it's, and I've got my heat setting on it. I just blow it against my face. I know exactly how hot I need it. Okay. And, Interesting. Um, they were the trickiest thing. And I, you know what? I'll tell you. When I won that artist challenge, I won some total boat epoxy. <laughs> Best Pro has her own maker epoxy that Total Boat has formulated for her. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, I'll use it. It's, it's a one to one. I'm, it was used to using a two to one uh, epoxy. And I got this stuff in the mail and I started mixing it. And honest to God, I almost needed like, you know, I needed to do arm exercises. It was so thick. Oh. But once, but once I started putting the white pigment in it and started blowing out the waves, oh my God, like honest to God, it took my cells to like a new level. Okay. That's the only thing I can think of that, um, that contributes to the waves that I do is, is the epoxy and, I'll, um, and the white pigment and the heat gun. And I use a little porch as well. Because once you lay out the waves, they start to sell out, but you want to break that surface tension a little bit more. So I just sort of hit it a little bit with the heat, uh, with the torch. Okay, and I see. The cells come out and you can almost tell, you can see it morph before you and you know basically where you want it. Okay, okay, interesting. So yeah, I just, I haven't done the wave thing yet. So, and I, but I hear what you're saying from watching a lot of videos. I haven't seen it firsthand. So one day I will get to that, to there. Um, yeah. yeah. So you're saying that the, that the maker epoxy was like amazing to, to, for making the waves. Exactly. It was almost like a game changer for me. Okay. That's interesting. Good. Yay for Are Jess. You, well, as an artist, you get, um, you get stuck on your medium. Like you don't want to go out of that comfort zone and try something new because you don't want to screw it up. Right. You know, right. And, but because I got this epoxy for free, I thought, well, you know what I'll make do with it. And I started using it and honest to God, like I got three gallons coming today in the mail because I I'm, I'm almost out of it. And <laughs> good for you. <laughs> so yeah. So if anybody wants like perfect waves, I would highly recommend a one-to-one -one um, art resin versus a two to one. I think okay. that's, that's important. And so even though it was thicker, it was still a better formula for, for making those waves. Yeah. Whatever Jess Crow did, she did it right. Like she yeah. <laughs> uh, basically, uh, formulated it to, to make waves and that's what it does. That's, it's, yeah. it's perfect. For that. Yeah. That's crazy. Good. Yeah. To know. I've been curious about that. And I hope Jess is going to be watching this. <laughs> I'm going to have to send her a message and say, hey, Jess, you better watch this one. <laughs> you know what? I love Jess. Like, seriously, she is totally my idol. Like, I, I <laughs> the girls She's up in Alaska are putting out these pieces that are, like, gobstoppingly beautiful. Like, I just, so anyway, I think she knows. Do you keep in touch with her? I think she's terribly busy, but you know what? She always, like, if I put a comment, she's always saying, hey, Laura. Okay. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. She's reached out to me a few times about wood and stuff like that. Uh, nothing's come of it at this point. But uh, I met her at, um, actually, WorkbenchCon 2019. Yeah. It's an awesome thing, that wood work, that w the WorkbenchCon. It's really uh, a great experience. If you, and it'd be perfect for you. You would be able to go and learn so much. It's unbelievable. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. So, one of the biggest challenges that you find, like, I like some, I like people to take away something, and I think that they've already definitely taken something away from our conversation. But, um, do you, can you recommend or, t uh, like, what kind of challenges have you run into um, with the epoxy um, that people should be aware of? Is there anything that you could point out that happened that you could that could be avoided if if they knew about it? 
And I do get a lot of questions and people are screwing it up left, left, right and center. Yes. And really the advice that I would give is just to really know your product, know how it works, start on small pieces to start with and figure out how it flows, how much heat you need, how much pigment you need. Um, and yeah, just start slowly, start on small pieces. Um, I think people want to get perfect like yesterday. And mm -hmm. I've used the analogy that uh, Picasso didn't become Picasso overnight. He started off with a stick figure and progressed from there. So it's kind of an analogy that, that practice takes perfect, or sorry, practice makes perfect. Uh, you've got to keep pursuing and keep resonating. Like if I don't resin at least four times a week, like seriously, the piece that I start off with afterwards is crap. Like you really have to pursue it yeah, and, and, and do it frequently and master it. Yes. Know your, yeah. Know your mediums, know how they react. Yeah. And it's just keep at it. Just keep practicing. Right. You know, that really makes sense. A lot of sense. Like yeah. you have to be dedicated to the art. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. To be, to be a true epoxy artist. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. So your favorite wood, is it, is it spalted maple then? Spalted, you got it. Yeah, I figured that. <laughs> I have a few pieces that you would probably like. Those are always the most difficult pieces to work with because half of the time they're rotten. I know. So, you know, the epoxy is a great medium to stabilize your piece and bring out the beauty and have a really nice looking piece of wood. What about when you have a piece that's uh, spalted maple, you want to work with it, but there's some rot in it. How do you prepare those parts with the like guy? I assume you use a clear epoxy on those areas. If there's holes or cracks, you fill them obviously. And you kind of have to look at the piece and say, well, what am I going to do with it? Um, and if it's a commission piece, it depends on what the customer wants. So if they want an oil finish versus an epoxy flood coat, then you sort of have to take those things into consideration. Um, I will prep pieces with epoxy and then sand them right down. I'll use, um, uh, like if I use uh, my hard wax oils, I'll use a thinner one for say more of the rot pieces where it will sink into the wood. Yeah. It's just, kind of, you know, looking at it and trying to stabilize it the best you can. Right. I think bow ties might be my next, uh, Ooh, how about epoxy bow ties that and with little inlays. Yes. Oh, right. There we go. Brainstorming. <laughs> right. Put on my to-do list. Yeah, that would be cool. Like they could be. They don't even have to be bow ties because if you fall, and I know you do follow David on Northern Joinery. Talk Sharp. About Dave from Northern Joinery. That guy's brilliant. I know. Like, like when you think outside the box, like he's two miles down the road. I know it's crazy the stuff he puts out. I absolutely <laughs> love Dave's work. Like, I think he's yeah. one of probably in my top five of live edge wood artistry. I like, agree. Seriously, the guy's got talent. Yeah, yeah. I interviewed him. Funny about him is that I've never met him, but we've talked so much and he's bought lumber from me. Yeah. And I had it delivered, so I didn't meet him, and that was a long time ago now, and we just never met. I was, gonna go to, I was actually going to meet him on March break. I rented a, an Airbnb in Aurelia to take my daughter up there for a few nights, okay. and then COVID hit, and I had to cancel, and never met David. <laughs> so, but I can At the Makers Meetup, Paula. When I did not see him there. I left before... He got oh, there. That's uh, that's that's true. So yeah. I was there with my daughter, and it was like, yeah, we just went to have a drink and a little bite to eat, and then we just we didn't stay late or anything, right? Yeah. So I missed. I know I missed all sorts of people. They're like, you were there. I didn't see you. It's like, oh well, I probably left before you got there, but uh, maybe next year. Oh, for I, sure. I'd love to do a makers meet up here at my house because I have a huge yard and like yeah. I can accomplish like at least 50 people right so I would love to do that one day okay, well, I can't wait till I can <laughs> put on our to-do list for sure absolutely yeah yeah you'll definitely be getting an invite <laughs> so anyways um 
So we've learned about stabilizing. So stabilizing, um, you're using a, what, what epoxy are you using for stabilizing then? Are you just using the epoxy that you use for making your waves or are you using like a West system or? I use an epoxy that's, uh, it, that's made by the Amish people. Oh. And sold at uh, the Burlington Exotic Woods. Oh, okay. And first I thought it was eco epoxy because I knew it was soy based, but I, they would never tell me. So finally somebody told me one day that they, they buy it, the Amish make it. Okay. The thick pour, and I have been using it since day one. Right, okay. It was basically a thick pour. Right, okay, so that's your stabilizer. Okay, right on, right on. The bases, you've gotten into this base thing where you've got, what, where do you find, you going finding these in the antique stores or where do you find all these crazy bases? I'm a real avid thrift shopper and I tend to repurpose everything. Like I buy yeah. nothing. I'll, I'll just put that right out there. Lori buys nothing new, except for maybe my gitches, but really, <laughs> seriously. And everybody that knows me knows this. If I'm say at, you know, a thrift store and I see a table that's got a crappy top and I look at the base while well, I'm underneath it, looking at it, I'm thinking, oh yeah, that'll work. So, marketplace a lot of these um you know online uh buy and sell sites yeah yeah you get some fabulous stuff i know i know gee the next time because there's so many times that i've been in a thrift store or somewhere like that and i see a base like man a piece of live edge would look awesome on that if i right. see it i'll i'll send you a picture and say hey laura you want me to grab it <laughs> yeah for sure for yeah sure. Because you know what, too, Paula, um, I want to do some welding. That's going to be sort of on my to-do list, too. My husband has a nice uh, welding set. My, my son is a welder. So I think once I retire, and that's probably going to happen within the next year or so, um, uh, yeah, Lori's going to put on some ugly welding things. And, and <laughs> that's going to be so cool. <laughs> yeah. You know, so that's sort of on my to-do list, my own bases. And I mean, can you imagine, Paula? getting some some pieces of metal and making like metal waves I'm, yeah that's what's going through my mind is all these metal fish and stuff and like fins stuff. and waves and starfish and all made yeah. from metal to make legs of some sort yeah <laughs> so you're not really retiring you're just gonna your whole epoxy business is just gonna go I know. and the whole furniture thing yeah yeah that's yeah. great it's, it's good a nice feeling it's it's such a different direction from um from my nursing career and it's such a good outlet and, and and seriously instagram i have met so many people like like i could just come over to your house and like go in your fridge and grab a beer you know what i yeah. mean like, like that exactly i feel that way about a lot of people on instagram too the community is like unbelievable just, it's such a good direction and it's it's sort of open doors that that I never would have thought would have opened for me Same and here <laughs> workshops that I'm planning to um, Nathan at uh, Crown Point Woodco is quite close to me it's got a beautiful old like the bottom part is his mill and his lumber but upstairs he's got um, a workshop or not a workshop but a space to die for benches a bar and you know what and we've been collaborating and we're talking about maybe starting up some um some workshops in the fall and he's offered me the space to do uh workshops if i wanted to do my own as well so yeah so it's just networking getting yeah. out there connecting with people and we all have the same interests. We all love wood. We all love to build things. So it's it's such a symbiotic or a win-win relationship. I just, I love Instagram. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. If you were, I might have to sign up for one of your classes. <laughs> that would be fun. <laughs> you, yeah. It'll be packed, I bet you it'll be packed. I know. <laughs> people will come from all over. I can imagine people like, booking a hotel room just so that they can come from wherever they are. Oh yeah. Your sure that, you know, had some good wine. Some yeah. food. It would be, uh, it would be really fun. Oh, and definitely. Too, so. Yeah. Put me down. I'm the first, I'll be there at the first class. You just let me know when it is. You say uh, in the fall sometime, eh? For sure. Okay. 
good, good. <laughs> That's awesome. Wow. Anyways, is there anything that I haven't covered that you would like to talk about at all? Uh, no, not really. I think we could yeah. cover a lot. I just want to thank you for having me on this little <laughs> venture of yours. <laughs> so I'm super excited about it because it's going to give everybody a chance to like another sort of avenue to take to get exposure and to, for people to learn about what they do and, and the challenges and all that. Plus it helps other makers that are new to the industry, right? For sure. And just putting a, um, you know, the name to a face. Yes. Just, yeah. Like you said, just putting it out there. Great, great idea. Yeah. 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 A lot of people, like there's a lot of people on Instagram. I, I've never seen their face. I really don't know what they look like. <laughs> And what one that I could say for sure is Lux Art. And I doubt I will ever get her on here. <laughs> Maybe she'd do a podcast with me, but I oh, doubt it. <laughs> really sparkly boards, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. she never, she even admitted one. I think she did a, she did a, uh, a post once about the fact that she never really, she never shows her face because she's a bit shy that way. Right. Hey, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me uh, and everyone where um, can we find you? What's your handle on Instagram? I don't have a website yet. Um, I do have uh, my social media platforms are I have a Wood Design by Lori Facebook page and Wood Design by Lori on Instagram. And so I just tell people if 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 I'm not doing commission work um, and I throw something on there, just direct message me and I'll let you know price and details. And really, I haven't had to do much advertising yeah. other than that. No, that's all you need. <laughs> it's amazing. That's what it is about Instagram, Facebook. It's like, wow. I'm getting one of those gimbals for my phone. So it basically, it's like a robot you put on your phone and it follows your hands. So once I get my studio set up downstairs, I'm going to probably do some, um, some tutorials. I've got a lot of people asking about my process. And um, so, in the next mm -hmm. little while, that'll be coming up as well um, on Wood Design by Lori. I'll be doing a little bit more getting myself out there with these tutorials. Yeah, so, so that we can see the process. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to see some of the process. I think that that, that would be a good uh, step, to, go to, step. To, to move towards. Is Like you're always showing your beautiful work, but we don't get to see what, how, how it got made, right? That's yeah, and everybody, I'm certain everybody's curious. <laughs> how did she do that? I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this, yeah, I heard about these cameras that follow you around and and stuff, and I hear a lot of people that are in wood shops are st are starting to to get into that. So that would be you would be one of the first, definitely, because I don't see too much of that right now. You know, it's just because when you're epoxying, and usually I'm doing it <laughs> at night, nobody's around to film me. Nobody wants right. to film. My whole life, you're done with it. So yeah, I'll set it up and I'll get a workspace that looks half decent and uh, yeah, throw, I'll throw some out. They'll be sort of on my to-do list. I look forward to seeing them. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been pouring this week or are you taking the time off of that too? No, I've been, I'm probably going to do a pour. I've got a few, I've got a live edge table that's got just a surface epoxy that I'm going to finish up today and um, I'm going to work on my artist challenge. I'm going to do the final yeah. pour on Day and then um but yeah i'm gonna take a couple of days just to take it easy so yeah well you've got the beach right there so lucky you thanks yeah yeah all right well good luck with the artist challenge thank you <laughs> you're probably gonna win it again oh, stop it. <laughs> there's some good artists putting some stuff in there i had to uh, I could... aim a little bit you'll see yeah yeah well and you're up. I'm certain you're up for the challenge. Oh, thanks, Paula. Yeah. All right. Well, enjoy All right. The summer. Yes, you too. And uh, we'll see you on Instagram. Sounds good, Paula. <laughs> thanks so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed watching, be sure to click like and subscribe and hit the notifications bell to stay in the loop. If you have any questions or if you would like to be featured on the Live Edge Lumber Girl Show, leave a comment below. Until next time.